What should we make today, Milo? What should we make today? What should we make? Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? You're such a good craft buddy. Good boy. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jenna from Brown Dog Craft Company, and today we're going to make a card using a Stampin' Up! set called Taco Fiesta. So when I started making this card, it was Taco Tuesday, so uh, I thought this card was really fitting for the week. So I, um, this stamp set only has stamps. It doesn't have coordinating dies. So um, what I decided to do was do a one layer card, sort of. <laughs> um, this part is one layer and it's using some masking paper. So uh, you'll see right here, I'm cutting out or I'm peeling the back off some images that I fussy cut out. So here's how you mask a card. You pick your images that you want on the card. So I kind of laid out the images that I wanted. So I knew I wanted a couple of tacos and I knew I wanted the chili. There's a little chili and a big chili pepper. Um, there's some chips there's a bowl of guacamole and a burrito and an avocado and then there's cute little like faces that you can put on all the on all the little foods and then there's a few things I didn't use like a pinata and a cactus and like a little citrus slice so when you're um when you're masking and you're doing multiple layers, you're going to stamp the images that you want in the front or the foreground first. So I stamped those first, which those are the chili pepper, the chip, the avocado bowl, the set of three chips, and the little chili. So those are my images that are gonna be in the very front. So once you stamp them on your card front, you then stamp them on a piece of masking paper and then fussy cut them out. And then that's what I'm peeling the backs off of there. That's the masking paper. And then you put it over your images. And then you work on a second layer. You only have to do two layers if you want. Um, I think I did three on this card. But you're going to make sure when you're putting on your masking paper that you put it directly over the image. That way whatever you stamp on top of it won't get on that images. And I think you'll you'll see how that works once we do the reveal at the at the very end, which is kind of the best part of masking is when you get to see the reveal when you're when you're finished. So I couldn't figure out where I wanted to put this burrito. Maybe the other way. <laughs> So um, I started out using um, a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound um, cardstock and I die cut that using, let's see, I used the Lawn Fawn Small Slim Line with Lift the Flaps die. So uh, it's a little bit smaller than like a slim line card front panel which is three and a half by eight and a half. So it's probably a half inch smaller, a quarter inch on each side. So, uh, and it does this super cute little stitching detail, which I love. It just adds a little bit of interest to the front of your card. So I aligned all the images, maybe a quarter of an inch at most above that line. Um, and I sort of used that line as like my grounding my grounding piece to the whole card um, so that the images kind of had like somewhere to sit so to speak. Uh, the masking paper I'm using is from Simon Says Stamp. It's their brand of masking paper. Down the center of the it comes in like a full sheet of eight and a half by eleven and it um, has a, a line down the center of it. So if you were to theoretically stamp all of your images directly down the center of the piece of masking paper, you could peel it off easily in the back, but of course we all try to get as much out of our 
supplies as we can. So I stamped them in the middle of the masking paper toward the top and then had to struggle a little bit to peel them off, but it works out in the end. <laughs> okay, so I've got everything stamped and I made, I made a mask for everything because I'm going to go ahead and do some ink blending. So with the masking paper on everything, all of the taco images, when I ink blend over the top of them, none of the images themselves will have ink, just the foreground. No, the background. <laughs> that way it looks like those images are sitting in front of whatever I'm going to um, ink blend on. So I thought about just ink blending some colors without um, a stencil. And then I decided it might kind of look like they're sitting on a kitchen counter if I used this brick stencil. So this brick stencil is also from Lawn Fun. It's not slimline sized, but it's super easy to make it slimline sized. So first what I did is I sprayed the back of the stencil with some pixie spray, which is just a repositionable adhesive um, that works really well for stencils that have uh, like fine lines. The magnets hold down the outside of the stencil, but they don't hold down the inside of the stencil. So when you ink blend over them, they occasionally um, will move and then and then then you don't get that that perfect image that perfect stenciled image that you're looking for so uh, I also used some post-it tape to uh, mask off that outside stitch line on the card uh, that way it will have a natural white frame around the ink blending once we're done so uh, the first color I used for ink blending was from Simon Says Stamp, I used Lemonade. That's the lighter shade. They come in an ink trio of three colors. So the first, the, the first shade in that trio, the lightest, is Lemonade. So I blended that on the bottom and then blended it up but with a lighter hand toward the top. And then I did the medium shade in Sunbeam and I concentrated that more toward the bottom. So I used the same uh, I used the same blending brush and just used a lighter hand as I got further up on the panel. Now I decided to take um, some of that ink that we used to ink blend. I squished it on one of my blocks, sprayed a little bit of water on it, and uh, at first I tried Sunbeam and I tried flicking that with a paintbrush onto the background and it wasn't quite dark enough so I decided to go to the next shade in that trio, which is citrine. So I added citrine ink to the ink block, got that wet again, and then used my paintbrush to uh, splatter some of that on there, and then I set it aside to dry. Okay, next these are a little banner, and they are from the Lawn Fawn, Lawn Fawn Fly High die set. It has a stamp set, I, I didn't use that. Um, it's from their spring 2023 release. So I, I used just the die. So I die cut the banner itself out of white five times. I used Nina Solar White again, or any, any thick cardstock would work. And then I die cut it once from each color of pattern paper. So red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And it's like a stripe, a pinstripe pattern. Um, it's a my favorite things, stripe splash paper pad. So then I fussy cut each one of those apart so that I could do five, I, I could make five banners with the amount of pattern paper banners that I cut out. So you can see I'm using my embellishment wand here uh, and my glue to glue those on. Uh, it did get a little bit faster the more I did but this was probably the second most tedious part of the card. You know, the first most tedious part is masking. While it is really, it has a really satisfying result, it is sort of tedious to do. Um, it just takes a lot of thinking <laughs> um, on, on how exactly you want to layer your images. So, all right, so there are all five of them. I colored the, um, like, string of the banner with a, 
black Copic marker. I think I used a W10. Okay, so this is my favorite part of the of the masking card, and that's the reveal. So I'm going to use my tweezers, and I'm going to carefully peel off all of the masks. And once I do, I'll hold it up closer so you can see. Some, some of the masks get pretty saturated with ink, so they kind of get stuck to the cardstock a bit. So I would just use caution when you're pulling them off so you don't either rip your cardstock or put your tweezers too far into your paper. So those are the images. As you can see, they're layered behind each other, which is super fun. And the ink blending is behind them. So that's super fun. Um, I'll apologize, I, I didn't realize that I wasn't zoomed in. So, um, next coloring card, I'll zoom in some for you. Uh, I will list all of the supplies I'm using and the colors I use to color everything in the description and also on my blog. So if you want to use the same colors, you can. So, when I'm coloring with my Copic markers, generally... I use a three color blend, but for small images, you can definitely get away with a two color blend and still have some dimension and some depth to your coloring. So I am by no means an expert at Copic coloring. Um, <laughs> I've watched a lot of the, the experts and kind of picked up some, some tips and tricks from them, but I am definitely still learning myself. So it's one of my favorite ways to color, my favorite mediums to color, um, but it definitely does take practice. So um, if you're new to coloring, don't be discouraged. Just have fun with it. And if you mess up, you just start again. <laughs> that's that's how I learned. Um, okay, so the lettuce. Um, the, let the lettuce was in greens. They were G07 and G14. And that's for the lettuce on the tacos and the burrito. And then the chili peppers are R24, R46, and R39. And then the stems of the peppers are G14 and G28. And that's both the big pepper and the little pepper that I'll color here a bit later. Um, avocados are YG25 and G24. The insides are E44 and E47, and then the outside, I just did one color. It's such a thin line. I did YG99. So I colored both the avocados that way, and I also colored the bowl of guacamole that way. So you'll see what I'm doing there with my darkest marker. I'm taking, after I've colored, I'm taking just the tip of the marker and doing like little dots on the images, and it just gives them a little bit of texture. So when you look at it in the finished photo, you can see it's not perfectly shaded. It's got it's got some texture to it. So under my mat or under my card panel, I've just got a mat that I use. It helps keep my my glass mat clean and I generally use it to test out what my colors look like for Copic coloring or ink blending or really anything. So you can kind of see the dotted detail a little bit there. It's much easier to see in person. Oh, and here I pulled out a piece of Nina cardstock. That's uh, my preferred cardstock for Copic coloring is Nina. You, you just want something that's super smooth. Any super smooth cardstock will work well. Okay, so for the tacos, I did, this is YR24, YR27, and YR31. And you'll see, I, I generally follow the same, the same tactic, I guess you could say, when I Copic color. So I lay down my base color of my lightest first. So over the whole image, using my lightest. And then I go in with my darkest shade, and I add wherever I think the shadow would be. So wherever things touch each other, um, 
you know, I don't pay too much attention to light source. I know a lot of people do, but that's just my preference is to just kind of color darkest where I think it should be darkest, <laughs> you know, towards the bottom of images or where images touch one another or would appear to overlap. And then um, I blend out with my medium and then usually again with my lightest shade. And then if I feel like it took away too much of the dimension, I'll go back and add in um, some more of my darkest shade. I also took, oh, I think I took some, that must be YR27 or 31. I took the darker shade there and added some more texture to the taco so it looked like they were, like the taco shells were baked um, and added some spots on there. Uh, the chips are Y00, Y11, and Y35. Those I didn't really do a lot of the like the dot stippling with because they had a lot of texture in the stamped image themselves. So I couldn't decide how I wanted to color the burrito. I knew I wanted it to look different than the taco shells. Um, but I ended up on E30, E31, and E34. So again, I'm going to cover the whole thing in the lightest shade. And then I come in with my darkest shade and my coloring where images touch one another or where I think there might be a shadow. I'm going to come in with my mid-tone here and blend that out a little bit, making sure I leave some of that lightest shade open. And then I come back with, with my light, blend everything together. And again, add some dark if I think it blended too much out. Those lighter markers... Um, have a lot of colorless blender in them and they really do lift the darker color pretty easily so sometimes if you do much if you do too much of the lightest color you definitely have to go back in with your dark so oh and then lastly the bowl the bowl of guac I did Y38 YR02 and YR15 now I did the YR02 However, and I ended up covering most of it up, so you could probably skip the YRO, the YRO too. I almost made the bowl blue. I'm glad I did, and I think I like it in orange. So I think it looks good with the red peppers. And there we go, coloring is all done. I'll show you a close-up at the end too. And I'll have great pictures on my blog so you can um, look in more detail at the coloring there. So now for the sentiments. I picked Holy Guacamole, It's Your Birthday. Oh, not yet. I did uh, the faces. So there's one, two, three, four, there's five faces to pick between. I think my favorite has to be the one that's on the big chili pepper. It has like a little solid color mustache, which is so cute. So I'd lined all those up and then for stamping those, I used I used my Versafine pigment ink in Onyx Black. So that's my go-to my go-to ink for stamping sentiments uh, and really anything that I'm not going to um, alcohol marker color um, or st or die cut out right away uh, just because it takes a little bit of time to dry because it is a pigment ink instead of a dye ink which all dye inks dry relatively quickly so all right all their little faces are on I, th I just really think it brings them to life when they have little faces <laughs> um, Okay, and then I took my uh, Sakura white gel pen, um, and let's see, it's the Jelly Roll 10. That's my favorite um, white pen for adding highlights. So I added highlights wherever I thought the lightest part of most images were. I didn't put them all in the right spots. I just let my heart decide where they should go. So 
I encourage you to do the same. Don't overthink it. Okay, so then I laid out my banner. I didn't uh, adhere it. I just kind of laid out where I thought it would be so I could frame up the sentiment there on the left. And I'm stamping that in that VersaFine ink. I stamped it a couple times. Um, when you stamp your sentiments, you want to be really careful not to push too hard. So instead of stamping once and pushing really hard, you should stamp multiple times because you can you can squish out your letters and then they they don't look as nice on the card because you like you you overstamped. Okay, then I took another sentiment. Uh, let's see, spectacular. <laughs> Uh, and I stamped that on white cardstock with the citrine ink. And then I die cut that out with a sentiment label from Simon Says Stamp. I use those all the time. Uh, I took a thin foam strip, put that on the back. Okay, now these banners, I totally could have glued them flat to the card. They would have been adorable, but I just, I couldn't. So I took some some small foam squares and I cut them in half and then I used my tweezers and I put a piece of foam square on the back of every single little banner. So what is that? Five times five. So 25 little foam thingies. I sped it up and edited that part out so you didn't have to sit and stare at me do that. But now I'm kind of laying the banner across the top. It looks like it's being decorated for like, like it's a kitchen or a tackle bar being decorated for a party. I love tackle bars for parties by the way. <laughs> So I line those all up. If anything hangs off, I'm just going to snip off the end. So here I pulled out my T-square ruler and I'm going to use that to help me line up this second, the secondary sentiment I have here. Looks good. Okay, here I'm using my triangle tray. Those are from Simon Says Stamp. They come in a pack of three. And I'm going to decide what embellishments I want. First I thought I wanted three hearts on the right, and then I decided, no, maybe just one heart on the left, and then I couldn't decide if I wanted orange or red, and ultimately I thought the orange heart kind of faded into the background, so I decided to go with the red. And then I pulled out, let's see, Pretty Pink Posh Pearls in Sunshine. I love Pretty Pink Posh Pearls. I have them in every color, <laughs> and they're my go-to. Um, and I try to put an odd number of embellishments, not including the heart. Uh, odd is more pleasing to the eye, so that's why the odd. And I generally try to put my um, embellishments in like a W or a Z shape. It doesn't always end up that way, but that's, that's the ultimate goal, I guess. But sometimes I don't have an odd number, and sometimes they're not in a Z or a W shape. So... <laughs> just have to go with the flow sometimes. I took a piece of Lawn Fawn cilantro cardstock and I cut that down to slim to slimline size to standard slimline. Uh, three and a half by eight and a half. Put some glue on the back. I normally use tape, adhesive tape, but I'm out. So glue it is. Put something heavy on top to help hold it down since I'm using glue. I think I use my Misty. And then I took a coordinating envelope. This is the Simon Says Stamp Slimline Envelope in the color Dandelion. And I'm going to take my VersaFine ink and a couple of the images from the stamp set and stamp those on the envelope so that the recipient not only has a fun yellow envelope, but a fun yellow taco envelope. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to open that when they get it in the mail? So, so cute. Makes me want tacos. And that's it for my card today. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.